now we're being recorded. I thought that all the, the preliminary stuff would be boring. You just watch me staring at the screen until everybody shows up. Not much fun. So uh, make sure you've got your little atheist book. Open it up uh, to chapter 13. We're starting at question six of the equip. Uh, and that is on page 91 of your little atheist book. And we'll discuss these uh, questions and um, talk through some things about it. And uh, then we'll, I'll, I'll let you ask any questions you might have. So we're beginning at question six. What are some New Testament passages that claim Jesus is God? Somebody name one. Whoa. <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> You're doing right. What did I do? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Name name one New Testament passage that uh, that uh, claim Jesus is God. Oh, sorry. My my phone like it went out of the meeting, and so I didn't know you were asking me a question. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, I'm asking all of you a question. Do you have one? Do you have an answer? Oh, um, which question? Question. Well, question six. Kristen's ready with one. So <laughs> question six. Kristen, what's a, a verse? Um, Second Peter one one. It mentions our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Yep, calls Jesus our God and Savior. What's another one? Rachel. Uh, John one one. Uh, the Word was God. Yep. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the whole prologue, really, that you memorized last year. Uh, this year's sophomores are on verse 17, so they're almost done. What else? Psalm 45.6. What does Psalm 45.6 say? Uh, it says that, like, God is claiming, I mean, Jesus is claiming that he is God. Okay. What else? Romans 9, 5, which um, says God, God overall and in Christ, all fullness of deity lives in bodily form. Yep. What else? Slayton? Matthew eight twenty nine. It um, even the demons acknowledge that Jesus is God. Yeah. Matthew eight twenty nine, And also in Luke four, there are a couple of verses too, 34 and 41, where the demons are calling him Messiah, where the demons know who he is. In fact, James uh, says that, you know, you say you have faith, that's good. But even the demons believe and tremble. The demons know Jesus is God. Doesn't mean, doesn't make them Christians, right? Uh, but they know that he is God. Um, so uh, yeah, there's a number of places where the demons confess who what else? Did we already say Hebrews 1 3? No, what does Hebrews 1 3 say? Um, sorry, I just lost my spot. <laughs> that's okay. Do you want me to say what it says? Uh, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact re representation of being. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. Word. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, they, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of God's nature. And then if you move forward to verse 8 of Hebrews 1, he, he calls Jesus, the author of Hebrews calls Jesus God. Um, some other ones uh, that I don't think we've mentioned, uh, Colossians 2.9 says that in Christ all the fullness of deity dwells. Um, in Matthew 123, um, or Matthew's quoting Isaiah 7, saying the virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. So Jesus was God with us. Uh, and then Philippians 2, one of my favorite passages in scripture, the Philippian church wasn't getting along. And so in, a, in, a, in, a, in an attempt to help them live together better. He, he asks them to humble themselves and put the needs of others above themselves. And then he gives Jesus as an example, saying that, that Jesus, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be taken advantage of. So he says, first of all, Jesus is in very nature is God, and that he is equal to God. Good answers there. Uh, number seven. 
what are some direct claims of Jesus to be God? What's, it, what's one of the times Jesus directly claimed to be God? When he said, I am. Yeah. So uh, which, which one was it that he was calling, saying, I am? Um, with, with his response with, how do you pronounce it? Sa Caiaphas? Caiaphas. Caiaphas. Mm -hmm. To Caiaphas. That's one. And, and Caiaphas said, are you the Christ? And he said, Jesus mm -hmm. said, I am. Right? Yahweh. I mm -hmm. am. What's another one? In John 8, 56 through 59, he says, before Abraham was born, I am. Yeah. So he's having this discussion, kind of a testy one, with, with the Jews. And he says to them, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Uh, and, uh, and they said, you're, only, you're not even 50. How can you know Abraham? And then he, that's when Jesus says, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was, I am. And so that's horrible grammar, but it's great theology because he's saying I existed before Abraham existed. He's saying I'm eternal. He's saying I am God. In fact, he says literally before Abraham was Yahweh, he's taking the name, uh, the, the self-revelatory name of God for himself. Uh, so it's a, and, and the thing is that there are people today who say, as did my uh, freshman year um, theology professor, that Jesus never claimed to be God. How can it be that people today can't understand that that's a claim to be God, but the Jews who heard it knew exactly what he was saying. They picked up stones to stone him. And a little later in John, he's saying, he says, so I've done a lot of good things. Which one of these do you, because he's in trouble again, which one of, or which one of them do you want to stone me? And they're like, we don't want to stone you for that. We want, we want to stone you because you being a man are claiming to be God. Uh, so the Jews of his day knew that, that Jesus claimed to be God. Now, the indirect claims, uh, I put down, there's a plethora of them. That's a great ACT word if you were taking the ACT. Which <laughs> it's not uh, that last Saturday. Uh, there will be a, too soon, sorry. <laughs> There'll be another ACT, and for all of you, you now get John Baylor for free, so... Uh, it's uh, all of you that have taken it anyway. Even if you took just that little bitty one, you paid for it. So, you're free. <laughs> um, so that's on pages uh, uh, 342 to 344. Uh, and then the divine actions of Jesus, and again, a plethora, 344 uh, and 345. Uh, two, that, um, two that I think are especially important. One is that he received worship from people. When, when angels are worshipped in scripture, they say, whoa, I'm not God, don't worship me. Mm -hmm. When Paul and Barnabas, uh, when the people of Greece tried to, to worship Paul and Barnabas, Paul said, we're just men like you, don't worship us. When, Jesus, when people worship Jesus, he was like, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. He accepted <laughs> their worship. Um, and then Jesus commanded demons, and demons did whatever he said. Only God can do that, right? So uh, mm -hmm. his actions prove that he is, um, is God. He, he raised Lazarus from the dead. Only God can do that, right? So uh, his actions proved him to be God. Number 10, given the historicity of the New Testament and Jesus claims to be God, what are the three alternatives that C.S. Lewis offers concerning who Jesus is? What's one of them? Uh, he's a liar. A liar. What's another one? Lunatic. He's a lunatic. What's or the third one? He's Lord. So I want to camp here a little while, not just because it's C.S. Lewis and it's from Mere Christianity. It's my favorite book. <laughs> this is my favorite quote from my favorite book. My favorite line from my favorite quote of from my favorite <laughs> book is the one about the poached egg. Uh, but I'm going to read that. They, they don't quote the whole uh, passage. So I'm going to read the whole passage. I've probably read this to you before. It's okay, because this is worth, you've, you've read John 3.16 more than once, haven't you? I mean, some things are bear repeating, so uh, I think that this bears repeating. So you just can listen to me for a second while I read this. 
Then comes the real shock. Among these Jews, there suddenly turns up a man who goes about talking as if he was God. He claims to forgive sins. He says he has always existed. He says he is coming to judge the world at the end of time. Now, let us get this clear. Among pantheists like the Indians, anyone might say he was a part of God or one with God. There would be nothing very odd about it. But this man, since he was a Jew, could not mean that kind of God. God, in their language, meant the being outside of the world who had, who had made it and was infinitely different from anything else. And when you have grasped that, you will see that what this man said was quite simply the most shocking thing that has ever been uttered by human lips. One part of the claim tends to slip past us unnoticed because we have heard it so often that we no longer see what it amounts to. I mean the claim to forgive sins, any sins. Now, unless the speaker is God, this is really so preposterous as to be common. We can all understand how a man forgives offenses against himself. You tread on my toe and I forgive you. You steal my money and I forgive you. I might not, no, I would. You steal my money and I forgive you. But what should we make of a man himself unrobbed and untrodden on who announced that he forgave you for treading on other men's toes and stealing other men's money? Asinine fatuity is the kindest description we should give uh, of this conduct, conduct. Yet, this is what Jesus did. He told people that their sins were forgiven, and he never waited to consult all the other people whom their sins had undoubtedly injured. He unhesitatingly behaved as if he was the, par he was the party chiefly concerned, the person chiefly offended in all offenses. This makes sense only if he really was the God whose laws are broken and whose love is wounded in every sin. In the mouth of any speaker who is not God, these words would imply what I can only regard as silliness and conceit unrivaled by any other character in history. Yet, and this is the strange significant thing, even his enemies, when they read the, gosp read the Gospels, do not usually get the impression of silliness and conceit still less do unprejudiced readers. Christ says that he is humble and meek, and we believe him, not noticing that if he were merely a man, humility and meekness are the very last characters we could attribute to some of his sayings. I am trying here to prevent anyone from saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would either be a lunatic on a level with a man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman, or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool. You can spit at him and call him uh, and kill him as a demon or you can fall at his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about him being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. So on this, um, uh, this page, it asks you to write out, um, or excuse me, I wrote out, later it asks you to write the flow chart, which is more, um, complete than this, but I just want to walk through with you the choices with Jesus' claims. I don't know how to share screen yet, and I probably never will, um, because I doubt I'll have time to figure it out. So here's my share screen right here, okay? So there's two choices with Jesus' claims. There's two choices, really, if anyone makes a truth claim, right? Either it's true or it's false. Now, if it's false, there are two choices if someone makes a, says something false. Um, it could be false. It could be that Jesus' claims were false, and he knew they were false. What do we call someone that says something they know to be false? They say something is true, and they know it's not true. What do we call that person? Liar. He's a liar, right? Yeah. He's lying. So if the, his claims were false, and Jesus knew they were false, then he's a liar. Now, Sometimes people say things that are false, but they think they're true. And that we can call that a misstatement. But let's take something that Jesus said. If Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, nobody comes before a fa the Father except through me, 
If that was false, but he thought it was true, what was he? Lunatic. Yeah, he's crazy man, right? So if his claims were false, but he thought they were true, he was crazy, he was nuts. Uh, he was a lunatic. Um, now, the only other possibility is that his claims were true, that he is uh, exactly who he says he is. And that means, oops, I made a little mistake here, that he is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Those are our only choices, um, the only ones that make sense. Either he is a liar or a lunatic, or he is Lord. Uh, sometimes I think people try to straddle the fence and say he was a good man, um, but that doesn't make sense of what he said. Um, and so how does C.S. Lewis refute the claim that Jesus was just a great moral teacher? And we've just answered that. Um, anyone who is a liar or a crazy man cannot be a good teacher because they're either teaching falsehood or they're teaching fantasy um, and, and uh, is immoral. There have been a lot of, a number of famous preachers over the past 20, 30 years who have fallen for grace, from grace, uh, who uh, have lied, who have cheated. Uh, and been immoral people themselves were all immoral, but they claimed to be something they were not. Uh, most of it having to do with extramarital affairs, but also with financial dealings. Nobody says Jim Baker or Jerry Falwell was a great moral teacher now, nobody, because they were liars. So we can't call a liar or a lunatic a great moral teacher. Um, so that, that option is not open. And then, Question 12 asked you to write down that flow chart. Uh, you'll be glad you did, uh, and on your study guide as well. Um, and uh, so you can, um, uh, you can write that down there. And then it says, write down a few pieces of evidence that attest to the fact that Jesus was sinless. Where do we see in scripture that Jesus was sinless? Peter talks about him in 1 Peter 1, 19. He's unblemished and spotless, um, as well as 1 Peter 2, 22, where he is committed, who committed no sin, nor was the seat found in his mouth. Yeah. How well did Peter know Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lived with him for three years, right? I lived with my roommates for one year and I swore both of them to secrecy when they met me at the Mall of America that they not tell my students anything that happened in college, right? They know me very well. They know I'm a dirty, rotten sinner deserving hell. You can't live with someone and make a statement like that unless it's true, right? John did the same thing. John also lived with him for three years. He said, in him, there was no sin. Uh, so uh, two, two people that were closest to Jesus say that. And, and as you well know, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, Paul says, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Mm -hmm. In him, we might become the righteousness of God. So Paul also claims sinlessness for Christ, as does the author of Hebrews, who says that Jesus was without sin. Um, so uh, there are a number of places in scripture where we're told that Jesus was sinless and human beings aren't sinless. Uh, he could only uh, be sinless if he was God. Uh, so you're, to answer the engage, I think tomorrow's um, Bible time is to answer those engage questions. And then Wednesday is your, is your quiz. So if you have questions on those engage questions or if you have questions on your study guide, ask if you have questions on your study guide right now i'll give you a, a chance in a minute to ask those but if you get into the engage and you're not sure email me text me call me uh any of those and, and i will um uh, answer your question uh whatever it is 
Uh, now, do you have any questions about the quiz? Do you have any questions about the study guide or from the study guide? Uh, no. I have one. Sure. <laughs> I'm still a bit confused on that third one down in the concepts to be able to. Okay, what does it say? Because I don't have the study guide in front of me. Identify the and how it relates to whether or not these stories are myths or legends. Okay, or myths. Start, start again with the first part. I didn't understand the first part of your question. Identify the, oh, identify the timing of the writing of the New Testament and how that relates to whether or not the stories are myths and legends. Okay, so the timing of when they were written, was there enough time for it to be legend? No. 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 How long does it take for a legend to arise? At least two generations. At least two generations. And, and these, uh, and the, the New Testament was, the whole of the New Testament was uh, written before AD 100. So um uh so they they can't be legend and it's just a, a basically a true false question um stating either a true statement or a false statement um based on that that fact that there that there's not enough time for the any, any of the new testament doc, documents uh to be considered uh legends does that help mm -hmm. yeah Good. Any other questions on the study guide? Okay, we'll make sure that you ask whatever questions you have. Um, and I, uh, I put the I put the test or the quiz in to teams. You you complete it on teams, like you complete it and then you hit submit. And it grades it for me. Parts of it for me. Part of it it doesn't. <laughs> the, the objective questions uh, it grades for me. Don't get freaked out if it says that all your subjective answers are wrong. It can't grade those. Uh, so I will grade those. So don't freak out. It's like it told me I had 17 points wrong on this thing. No, no. Um, well, it'll tell you what ones you got right of the objective questions, but. Uh, don't don't freak out. I'll grade those, and if they're right, you'll get them right, and if they're wrong, you won't. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Please ask questions if you have them. That's why I'm here. I'm doing. That's not. I'm. I'm not doing nothing. But whatever I'm doing, if it's not this or recording a video, I'd rather answer your question. I'd rather have some human. <laughs> interaction uh, because the rest of what I do besides zoom and videotaping lectures uh, uh, takes up a lot of time but it's not time I enjoy so uh, I'd much rather be with you and I miss you at least I know that I'll have you back as seniors uh, I'm really <laughs> grieving the loss of those um, so uh, yeah uh, I will uh, I will look forward to I think you probably will be looking forward to being back in the classroom again as well. We'll all appreciate school a little bit more. Okay, no more questions? Nope. Okay, I miss all of you very much. And stay safe, stay healthy. Okay? Okay, you Bye. too. Bye. Bye. Bye.